Welcome to the Atlantic Indie Roundabout here at CIOE 97.5 FM. I'm your host, Maurice O'Goyne, and we are streaming live to the world at www.communityradio.ca. We are going to discuss and celebrate independent artists' music from all over the Atlantic region and beyond. Let's all get on the Atlantic Indie Roundabout right now. Good evening and welcome to the Atlantic Indie Roundabout. This evening we'll be continuing our conversation with Canadian music legend and icon Ken Tobias. Now Ken's been recording music non-stop for the last 50 years and the stories that he's gathered along the way are absolutely amazing. Let's continue this conversation with Ken Tobias. So one of the things I do have an ability of is an arrangement mind. So I know how to arrange. I can't write them down but I can do it with my mouth. I can arrange horns. I can arrange uh, keyboard parts, I can arrange lots of stuff, just speak by telling them exactly what I want, or I can actually show them. And all these musicians I, I got were always better than me. I made sure they were in the sense of executing their, their instruments. Um, uh, delegating is a, is a fine art in itself. And uh, to get, to get the right. quality musicians that you can easily put yourself behind the... Uh, give them every opportunity to make it right. When you make it, you want to make it right the first time. So if That's you can right. find better musicians than yourself to record your music, you'll always be happy with the results. That's humility. It's also, it's also smart. And uh, you've had that smart <laughs> since you started in the business, you know, many years ago. Well, there's a couple of times where I, I had other people record me. It'd be the producers. For, well, my very first album, I mean, the guy that produced me, produced the Osmond Brothers, who were like the white Jackson 5. And uh, he was, at the time, the whiz kid. So when we went in the studio, I was older than he was. And, uh, and we went in the studio. He had all the arrangements done before he we went in. Now, I have to tell you, on my first album, I had the Wrecking Crew. Joe Osborne, Larry Nactel from Bread, uh, and uh, Larry Carlton 
Mm. The guitar one uh, had um, that was based in the rhythm section, and I played guitar. I just wanted to be right. I just wanted to do it. I had enough ego that mm. I I knew I I knew my song. Yeah. But here's the thing: the producer he had um, no idea really what roots music was about, and uh, he was uh, it was very Hollywood, very classy, very pop, very uh, you know. Uh, a lot of orchestration. We went in there, and um, he had done an arrangement to Dream Number no. Two, and he had already cut out the seven eight feel to it. I didn't know this, so I went in the booth, and uh, and Hal Blaine counted it in. The band went one way, and I went another, and we stopped for a minute. And Hal Blaine says, "Whoa, oh, whoa, come on in here, kid, come here." So I went inside. He said, "Something's wrong." And I said, "He said, play the song." So I sat down in the middle of the floor, and they gathered around the drums. And I, I played the tune, and Hal goes, oh, I get it. Okay, okay, boys, here's what we're going to do. And it so happened that the producer was out having a whiz or something at the time, and uh, he, he wasn't there for the to, to, to say anything. And uh, we went in, and, and the engineer, we put in a record, and we, we started out. We played the tune from the top to the bottom, and we finished, and it came off really well. And, uh, and it so happened that the producer came in halfway through it. He never said one word. Not a thing. Hal Blaine saved that song for me. What a great story! And uh, I'll never. And so anyway, the other thing is, producer said to me, he said, "You got some things you want to tell me about the songs?" I said, "Well, after all, my friend, it is my album, so I have some stuff I would like to say." And he said, "Okay, so here, here's a clipboard, here's a pencil. Go home and write down some ideas on a couple of the tunes." Well, I went through eight songs and came back in, and I said, "I have something to say about all the tunes." He got bucked at me and left the room. Oh, it was stay a while. He's, he he. He had two oboe solos and, and flutes and all that kind of stuff. I said, listen, Larry Carlton under the track is playing this great guitar part. He's doing harmonics and he's playing kind of country licks. I said, please, for God's sake, we got to bring that up in the mix. I said, get rid of the extra flute solo mm -hmm. and let him do the solo. He's playing a solo. And he said, well, tell the engineer what to do. And he left the room. And at that time period, engineers wore suits and they... They, they looked at you and said, what do you want me to do? Yeah, they made no decisions. So anyway, so I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I don't want to have any strings in in the beginning, and I don't want any drums in in the beginning. I want the first verse, blah, blah, blah. And then I want you to bring in, the, the, the bass is going to do a walk, but boom, boom, boom. This will bring in the, the rest of the song. Then I said, on the beginning of the second verse, I want you to, that's where you bring the strings in. Get strings all the way through. And I said, it's going to lift the song really nicely. And then afterward, and I was just, I was just, listen, behind my my mind, I was just freaking, I'm I was scared. I was keeping my cool in the front, though, very cool. And uh, so then you, I that said, would, that would be your poker face, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like, it's like charging through the wind. I'm going to get there. I'm going to yeah. make it. So finally, at the end, um, I said, bring up the, that, the, that guitar solo and the thing. So meanwhile, while I'm doing it, the producer, he's standing near the doorway. I don't see him, but he's down there listening. And then the song happens, and, and he got goosebumps when the strings came in. And he walked in, and he said, you know something? That sounds really good. He said, I'm, he apologized. He said, I'm sorry. He says, I, I didn't know really what to do with the song. I didn't quite know what to do. He said, because it has a roots feeling to it, and I didn't want the song to be, I didn't want the album to have a country thing on it. He said, so I, I said, it's not a country tune. It's just a roots song. And, and so you have to deal with it to a certain point with with some of those licks. So when we finished it, he was just very, very happy with me. And he listened to all some of the other things I had to say. And it turned out really good. Did you and work with him again? Yes. Eventually what happened was Mike Curb, who was the president of MGM, who had who, who was uh, uh, he had the Mike Curb singers and all this kind of stuff. But he was president. He called me into his office and he said, I want you and Michael Lloyd that's the producer. I want you to produce that song you have called Now I'm in Love. He said, I think the both of you have worked well together. And so we did. We went down and we worked together. And we produced the tune together. So here all of a sudden I, I went from no producer to being a professional producer with that, with Michael Lloyd. It was the whiz kid, as they called him. And early in your career. I mean, you know, this isn't like after years of experience and, you know, doing that. Like, you know, basically you thrust yourself right, right to the front of the room. That's fantastic. Walking, talking Someone at my heart I hear her knocking Laying, praying She'll take me in her arms and say 
she's staying Welcome back to the Atlantic Indie Roundabout, and let's continue our conversation with Ken Tobias. I wasn't a technical producer. There's some who aren't. They, they don't know the board. They they rely on their engineer to do stuff, and uh, and rightly so. Those guys, a lot of engineers, trust me, have should got should have got the credit for production more than the producers. I mean, then there's those technical producers who are mostly engineers as well, who who know all about that stuff as well. They know. It, it, with me. Now I have hands on. I mean, I used to frustrate me if I couldn't put hands on because I used to say yeah. to my, till I met this guy in Toronto, David Ballin, I said, David, what does that do there? He go, well, try it. And I'd say, okay. And it, let's say, he, and I'd reef it. I reefed it up and all of a sudden the song was horrible. And, he, and I, then I bring it back and say, well, there's what I want right there. He said, see, you have to do it yourself. A creative person just needs to know the tools. That's right. And, uh, and, and that I think it's only fair uh, to help a person uh, who who wants to do, who wants to get something out, like Brian Ahern, you know, he listened to me. I believe in passing on information, uh, and uh, and it's not fair that uh, like what Bill Medley said to me when I was in the studio. He said, "Ken, what do you want to do?" Now, that's amazing. What do I want to? Uh, you're the producer. What do I? Well, here's how I want to do. And he say, "Okay, let's try it. What what kind of uh, instrumentation do you want?" He was very generous, and and he taught me some production ideas like I, I remember when he recorded his I he, he brought me into a Sinatra session Wow and uh, it, uh, who was uh, who was there um, this famous poet American poet Rod McEwen he was a famous poet in America and he was also had his own records out and so on and he was known to all the um, you know all artists and and even Frank Sinatra knew the guy these guys he recorded that uh, a lot of records that did very well anyway uh, Bill knew him, and they, brought the, they invited me into the recording session to, so I could see what was going on, and uh, and and watch the engineers. And Bill, uh, when Bill recorded, he also produced the stuff. See, in those days, and I did the same thing when I did my song "You're Not Even Going to the Fair," my first song that he produced. The whole studio was set up with with all the musicians are all around you, 
and there's a booth in the middle. You can, and it's got glass and you can see all around you. All the musicians are around you. There's like 30 musicians. And then there's a director and he's standing up in front. And uh, there's some famous, Bill Baker was the guy that was the one that did me at the time. He did, the, did a lot of the Righteous Brothers stuff. But anyway, when I first saw that done, Bill would be in the control room with the engineer. The band would play. The whole band would play without the vocal. And they'd run through some of the stuff so all the mics were right. And they'd check everything because it was all live miking, which was fantastic. And, um, and and once everything was right, he'd go by. He'd go out into rooms, go into the booth, and and say to the engineer, "Okay, cut her in the way we're going to go." And he and they'd cut it once, just like that. And uh, so we did. You're not even going to the fair, which was wonderful. My first single. Um, that's what happened. Uh, I was in a room with God. Carol Kay was the bass player, and all these great musicians were playing. I didn't know half them. Mike Basie. Uh, and it was amazing to work with him. I mean, Larry Neck, though, God bless him, he's dead now. Larry was also in a band called Bread, and he played piano with David Gates, who was the lead singer. And so anytime I hear Bread, I listen closely. I hear his piano playing. I can I can tell who it is. Joe Arsman, I think he's the only one still alive. Uh, Hal Blaine's gone, too, now. So the song, I Just Want to Make Music, um, one of the lines that I can't play piano, I can't play sitar. Have you ever yeah. learned how to play either? Yeah, I, I, well, I'm just learning to play piano over the last a few years. I play at the piano. So in other words, I'll just, just sit down uh, on, when, a, when I got a track. Have you, have uh, you written uh, on it yet? Fairly well along. Um, I have. Uh, I have written on it a couple of times, uh, mostly like major sevenths, easier C major seventh uh, and F major seventh, those kind of chords. And uh, But I haven't really gone into... If I had another lifetime, I think I'd be a good piano player. I think you that that's fantastic. Everything. No, you can't. But I'll tell you, what's fantastic is that, you know, you've been doing this for, you know, how many years you've been at it. And, you know, the old line, you can't teach an old dog a new trick. Well, you know, you're actually, <laughs> you're still picking up new instruments. I think that's a fabulous, a fabulous. Well, see, I never believed in you. I never believed in that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't live by it either. Well, give us the backstory of that song. I guess you got uh, a little story for it. Yeah, well, uh, we were sitting in, uh, you know, it was a, like... Uh, early evening, the sun was going down, and we were in Hollywood Hills. We had the windows open. It was kind of Hacienda type styles, and we were kind of sitting there and and listening to uh, the night and, uh, and just enjoying ourselves and uh, having a, probably a tea or or some kind of beverage. And I uh, we were all of a sudden I could hear the night birds starting to sing out out the out the door. And uh, I was we were talking. I was talking. We were talking about songwriting at the time. And uh, I said, you know, I, I was arrogant. I said. You know, I can pretty much write anything I, I want to write if I feel like it. And then I heard this bird, truth, a bird going. <laughs> no way. And I went and I said, hey, listen to that. Da, 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 da. I just want to make music. I just want to make music all night long or something like exactly. But, but I just want to make music. And they Wonderful. all just laughed at me and I wrote the tune. Well, who got the last yeah. laugh there? <laughs>
Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the Atlantic Indie Roundabout right here at CIOE 97.5 FM and streaming to the world at www.communityradio.ca. talking with ken tobias and uh all the stories uh, i we could do this all night moving ahead now i noticed like uh, some of the songs like like my maria and yes. i had a dream this is like from the mid 2000s now i hear the the production has changed like you know is this stuff that you produced yourself yes you see eventually i got to do what i want to do for example uh, the songs you mentioned are on my from a distance album now the from a distance album is probably at this point my favorite album and it was partly because I had done a pre-production before that. I had sat down and, and recorded all those songs myself and got them to be what I wanted. They made me feel good. And I, from the top to the bottom, every song, I liked them all. They weren't kind of, okay, I'm going to put that song on, that'll finish it up. But I, every song, I really liked them all. And at the time, they really made me feel good. And it was the first album that I did in my hometown. Music New Brunswick was just getting itself together. And we, of course, my brother and I, we came, we were much more professional in the sense had been in the big show and so on. And um, we went to them. We wanted to, uh, uh, I was going to pay for the recording, but I needed some money to do, to put it out kind of thing. And uh, so uh, everybody was getting these grants. I've never got one in my life. So we went for them for a grant. And they said to me, if you want a grant, then you have to produce it in St. John and you have to use local musicians and uh, et cetera. So I, you know, I, I was kind of concerned about that at first. I, said, I don't know. I mean, I wanted to do it. I was thinking of doing it in Halifax uh, with people I knew down there, maybe Fred Lavery or those guys. 
uh, people I knew and I trusted. I didn't know any any studios in city, uh, so I was concerned about finding people that you know whatever. So anyway, I finally found them and found the studio. Had tr- some trouble with it, but but uh, eventually I had to bring it to my own studio and I remixed it here and uh, to do the things I had to do. I, and I was pleased with songs like um, "Stars in the Water." It really turned me on. I thought it was a beautiful piece. And uh, and my Maria turned out good and um, etc. So see, I, I consider myself a pop rock rhythm and blues guy, and then I go to wherever I want to go, but basically within those confines uh, as an older guy. And so I I thought that that depicted what I was in in musical style. Let's listen to my Maria. If the ship comes sailing on me the rising But how am I supposed to know What the ship you're sailing on my Maria Oh Maria My Maria
was a beautiful night Out on the water The frogs were croaking And the wind was warm And you steered the boat Across to the island We were so much in love Had to be on our own Your lips were red And your eyes were blue It wasn't hard to fall for you You stole my heart listening to the Atlantic Indie Roundabout with me, your host, Maurice O'Coin.
been listening to the Atlantic Indie Roundabout with me, your host, Maurice O'Coyne. Ken Tobias of 2022. Here we are. You're looking at all the years, all the songs, the hit records, the 200 or 300 paintings that you've already painted. Um, where, where do you see yourself going from here? Um, 
I've got six electric guitars and three acoustics, and uh, I play them all. And uh, I just bought myself a really new telly, and I'm playing. I mean, that just excites me to play. And I've got in the can probably another 20 new songs, and I'm writing all the time. And uh, that's and painting. I mean, that's really what I do. Um, I've been uh, practicing meditation and Eastern philosophy for like 50 years at least. That that's my mainstay. For example, my paintings, my space paintings, those are really cosmic prayers. Uh, I, I, I everything that that I do, all my creativity, I I have. I'm a co-creator. Let me put it that way. I create with the divine, if I may use the term. Uh, I sign my paintings with a, a signature that has a, a red circle on a a beige bottom, a round circle with three round dots inside. That's called the banner Pax Cultura, uh, Peace Through Culture. And it was brought about a long time ago, 1938, by a great Russian painter who, who wanted to make sure that no one would bomb the buildings that flew that flag in war. Because if they did, they'd be bombing culture. Not in, in Culture is more important than anything when it comes to according to this guy. Anyway, so what I do is I make sure I put that signature on there so that it, it shows that I'm a co-creator with the divine because, and I'm not being facetious, that's the way I believe. I've always believed myself as a warrior of light. I've always believed that I should be a person who tries to bring good into the world uh, through my, uh, through art and philosophy, uh, art and, 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 and music. And, and if you listen to my songs, uh, all, there's lots of love in the song, but there's also uh, I try to write uh, about things I believe in. Uh, and in the songs, I always make sure that there's no hate in my songs. I don't write, even if I got hurt in a relationship, I try to write it in such a way that it something is learned from it. Um, I, I, I can't at this time in my life uh, ever you know, think of anything negative. I, I try to think of things positive. And then, so to answer your question, I know I've gone around, I am just going to be creating uh, continuously i always tell my friends if you come to the house and there's not a new painting or a new song i'm dead yeah and that's pretty much it there's so much more to learn it's a, it's a forever thing to me the other day i, I decided i was going to I, I hadn't written in a while and i thought i just want to sit down and write i don't want to i don't have anything i want to write about so i made a list of titles i just said blah, 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 blah. and uh, what i like about it is that they give you scenarios and your mind starts to go and work out these these stories and it's really interesting. And you walk down, you know, you're walking here and you're going there and uh, you find out uh, and you're trying to resolve a problem. Uh, as you know, when you write, you're trying to figure out where you're going to go and you try to resolve that problem, make it a, as a, what, I, what I call a round record where everything is complete and you can understand the story. And, you know, I, and all of a sudden I wrote a country song. I wrote a blues song. I wrote a song about loneliness. And, and not long ago I wrote, I tried to do something different where I wrote music and there was there were lyrics and there's parts of the song that are sung, but I did dialogue. I actually told a story, and uh, and the story had a beginning, middle, and end, called "Under the Hot Desert Sun," and it takes place. And uh, when I was, I used to hang out in the Mojave Desert sometimes with my friends. We'd go out there, and there was no electricity. We'd go out there and and uh, and write and just hang out and and uh, drink cervezas. And and at night it was just amazing. In the daytime, you know, whatever, and you you, you could lose time. If you read any Carlos Castaneda books about uh, uh, San Mescalito and all this stuff, it kind of puts you into that sort of place. Anyway, so that's what it's about, and uh, it's a very interesting song. And it's, um, I'm very proud to have written it because it turned out to be really good, and I've been thinking, you know, something you should do more of that. I, I, the other day I wrote a story, and then I thought, well, man, you should paint a painting to this story. It's about a cat walking through and uh, getting off uh, coming from a jam one night and he's well, he has to walk through a, uh, a kind of cul-de-sac through a bit of a woods like we all do around here from suburbia and then you get to a highway and then you go to your house across the road and he had to go through a bit of woods and when he was there uh, a spacecraft landed and and some guys got out and he and he had his guitar with him and uh, he sat down and played some tunes for them <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> and the painting shows him standing neat. playing his guitar, and these two guys, two aliens, are standing there watching him and so enjoying it. And it's called uh, uh, "Hanging with My Friends." Well, that's not and, like uh, that's like two killing two birds with one stone. You write a you write a song and make a painting of the same thing, and yeah. but it's also a story. That's, yeah, I can write, put the story in my storybook. I've got another nice. one that's what fifty six pages already written on a 
a story called uh, A Hole in the Concrete, and it's kind of a sci-fi f- uh, fiction, which I do write a lot. And I have written I've written uh, some stories in my life, and I almost got one into a movie years ago. So it, all of it is just a matter of you got time, sit down and write. You're inspiring. Thank you. Canada, take a walk in the country, yeah. or maybe go down to Mexico, anywhere, I don't care, just as long as you're with me, with me, I'll be a rock and roll man, run away with me baby, run as fast as you can. not done yet. We'll be right back with more of the Atlantic Indie Roundabout with me, your host, Maurice O'Coin. Stop you. 
Thanks for spending your time with us this week in the Roundabout, and especially our guest, Ken Tobias. Ken's been writing and recording award-winning music for over 50 years. He's had top 10 hits on both sides of the border and offers a perspective that few musicians ever get to see. Now, as a musician myself, I'm truly inspired by his stories, his insight, and of course, his success. We hope you've been inspired and entertained as well. I'd also like to take a moment to thank my producer at CIOE FM, Ron James, who's been instrumental in keeping our show on the air through the summer break. We have more fabulous episodes coming soon and some new features we hope will entertain and excite our listeners. And until next week, from our village to yours, take care and good night.
Join me, Maurice O'Coin, here at the Atlantic Indy Roundabout every Thursday night at 8 p.m. here at CIOE 97.5 FM and streaming to the world at www.communityradio.ca where we'll be listening to and celebrating the music from independent artists from all over the Maritimes and beyond. Join me Thursdays at 8 p.m. here at CIOE 97.5 FM.